Good morning. So it's bright and early on a Sunday morning, and unfortunately I'm not that bright when it's early. But anyway, I have a Fisher 400 receiver brought by Steve, who apparently gets things that aren't sound craftsmen. I'm kidding. He uh, tends to get a lot of Pioneer sound craftsmen and Fisher tube equipment. He likes the Fisher tube stuff, and it is really nice. Um, this particular unit, he said, had no FM, and when I went through it, he was correct. I always like to verify symptoms to make sure that we're all on the same page. I'm not chasing a phantom. And full disclosure, I've already gone through and found the problem. And, and the reason I did this, I like to do this full time on the camera most of the I mean real time on the camera most of the time. But on tube equipment, which is in most cases point to point, it takes me a long time to locate components. And I just find it's a lot easier if I do some of this work beforehand, just so I'm not fumbling around too much on camera. Not that I'm not going to fumble around a little, but in any event, I'll show you what I did to determine where the problem is. And it's kind of unusual, but these things happen. And that's why I always say that a logical, methodical approach will yield results almost every time. So without further ado, let's take a look at this thing. I spent a little bit of time going through signal tracing from, <clears throat> excuse me, the output of the front end, which should be our IF frequency at 10.7 megahertz, and going through the IF stages. And what I should have done is simply gone to the output to see if it was good. And in this case, at the output of the uh, <clears throat> the ratio detector and I get a little fuzzy on this because I don't do enough radio work and I'm not as experienced as I would like to be but this should be a ratio detector a Foster Sealy discriminator these diodes will be facing the same way when they're facing opposite directions like these are this is a point that this is a ratio detector at least if Wikipedia is not lying to me, because I confess I had to look it up. Again, I don't spend a lot of time on, on radio circuits. But anyway, I am picked off with my oscilloscope at the uh, output of L7, which is going right to our, um, our stereo uh, demodulator. So if you take a look at the scope here, you can see we have signal. I'm going to move the uh, tripod a bit, and we're going to zoom in. And that is our right only. If I step through and go left only, if I'm modulation off, mono, right equals minus left. And if we move the trigger on the scope, I can get it to trigger on something. And then right only, we get this. So I know that it, I have good FM at this point. <clears throat> this is right before it goes to the... Uh, to the FM stereo board. However, if I go to the FM stereo board with the scope, the other end of that piece of wire, I get nothing. And this points to where our problem is. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to show you how I determined where the wire goes because again, these point-to-point -point designs can be kind of a pain to work on. Take a look. This is what we're dealing with here. And finding things can be problematic at best. Um, generally speaking, what I do is I'll look at the tube socket, and I'll find my pin, and I'll trace the components from there. I cut my teeth on old television sets that had printed circuit boards, had layouts. Maybe I got a little spoiled. I can work my way through this, but it's pretty tedious. And I'm definitely going to turn the camera off because it's painful to watch. Turned all the test equipment off to make it a little quieter in here. But I'm going to show you how I trace this wire out. Now, our last point, and I'm going to have to move the camera just a little. Our last point was right here. So from this inductor which according to the schematic is L7. There's a black wire that goes here. So 
I'm going to jiggle that wire. If you look down here, right where the end of my finger is, you can see that moving just a little bit. So that tells us that this is the other end of our wire, right here. So that is this guy. If we watch really closely, we can look down here, and I'm going to point with the probe. That's going right to here. And now, I'm going to put my meter in continuity mode so we can hear this. I'm not going to put the meter in the frame, but we're just going to listen. Because the problem is, this piece of wire somehow is open. So if we do that, we're good. And if we look at the other end of that wire, which comes to here, we got nothing. And I checked it with the ohmmeter, and it's open. So this is our problem. That piece of wire is open. And I proved this to myself, and I'm going to prove it to you, by taking a jumper lead and jumping it out. So I'm going to leave it hang here for just a moment, and then after it warms up, I'm going to turn this thing on. And by the way, I don't say this often enough, but if you guys do any of this stuff, you're doing so at your own risk. And that goes double for tube equipment. Vacuum tube equipment carries lethal voltages. I'm going to say that again, lethal voltages. So if you work on this, you're doing so at your own risk. When I was in electronic school, they said when you're probing a live chassis, keep one hand in your pocket because you don't want to be touching the frame, leaning on it, and then probing because if you get a shock through this finger, it's going to go right through your thoracic cavity, possibly stopping your heart. So, standard disclaimer, if you're doing so, you're doing so at your own risk. So I have turned this thing on now. We're on FM. And I'm letting it warm up. And this is all we get, which is most likely from uh, that wire hanging off there. But yeah, there is no FM at all. So I'm going to take our jumper lead. Connect. It may make a loud pop when I do this. I haven't done it with it plugged in before. about no condemnation for those words. And there it is. That is the whole problem with the FM. Hi, my name is Angela. Now, how did that wire open up? I haven't the first clue. It's buried down there. Nobody's been in it as far as I can tell. But that black wire that goes from L7 here, which is the output of the IF, into the FM stereo demodulator stage is open. I can't explain how, I don't know why. I'm gonna run a fresh wire through there, and as you can see, that solves the whole problem. Uh, this is how the extensive work. Steve went through here and did a lot of uh, parts replacement, a lot of new capacitors, some new resistors. He put in a board to balance the output tubes on this. Um, thing's beautiful. He really did a great job. He does very meticulous work, but uh, this is a just an oddball problem. I cannot explain why that wire opened up. Possibly just thermal stresses that may be open inside the insulation somewhere. Um, I'm going to pull it out and possibly just pull, see if it pulls apart from inside. But that's the problem. And we demonstrated by putting this jumper lead in here that... Uh, that's the whole thing. That was the whole reason the FM didn't work. So this is a fairly short video. As I said, I spent a lot of time going through here. You don't need to be subjected to that because the smart thing would have been to go right to the output of the IF. Um, I'm just not that familiar with, uh, with radio and spe specifically with tube tuners. This is probably one of only a handful I've ever worked on. But anyhow... That's it. That's all I have to say about this. And as always, I thank you for watching. And I like giving back to the community that's given me so much. Take care, everyone.